or like let's say your tire blows out and you know you accidentally scraped your hand on the concrete and now you have a road rash on your knuckle well like cool is a tourniquet and you know a whole thing of combat gauze really what you need there no you probably want to just be able to disinfect the wipe maybe cover up some of the cuts and put some uh, antiseptic stuff on it so you don't you know get a weird gnarly skin issue smart Not to mention if you have to stop at a gas station and buy that stuff it's like congratulations you get three pills of excedra migraine for ten dollars yep it's like yeah you end up blowing money yeah that's how like literally you can start to afford nicer things like night vision and stuff like that just being conscious of the little spending that you do that is unnecessary by poor preparation What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in. We have a pretty cool loadout video here for you. We've had Colin Underdahl on the podcast and on our YouTube channels before. He's here to talk about some loadout equipment and we've had him talking about loadouts before being that he was prior Marine Corps, but this one's a little bit different. So he is on a multi-day road trip and we're talking about what he carries with him being that he is traveling for work not just for personal reasons. He has a couple different reasons to be down here in Tennessee with us. So Colin, what are you carrying in your car? Let's say that we're not talking about work-related equipment for the most part, just what do you tend to carry if you're, you're gonna do a long range road trip in your vehicle? Yeah, so this trip has been a combination of personal and work. So we left a little bit of each out just because, you know, there's stuff that is pretty obvious that I'm gonna pack, like clothes. Uh, I brought a suit for a wedding. Um, I brought extra equipment for media stuff, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, generally, most of the stuff you see on the table is stuff that I bring with me anytime I'm gonna leave my house for an extended period of time. Obviously, minusing those uh, like underwear and socks type deal. Did you bring those? Yeah, where are they at? I'm rocking the same underwear and socks. So like when I brush those off later. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Smart. What, what brand? Are you Hanes for the loom? They used to have a brand. Now they're just holy. <laughs> Actually, that's a good brand nice. name for some underwear. <laughs> holy. <laughs> holy. But yeah, so um, I'll start with the uh, Milwaukee Packout. Um, I've never really liked the idea of having too tactical looking of a vehicle. Um, you know, once you start kind of kidding out a truck, it gets a little bit obvious of like what your interests are, because let's be frank, uh, most of the interests on this table are pretty niche. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they start to kind of tell people who you are without even them knowing. So you don't have like a Spartan. Uh, come that, and take them. Yeah, come and yeah, take them. Yeah, I have the, the don't step on me snake in the back yeah. of my window. Yeah. and. Uh, yeah, I, I, since I was driving down to the south, I threw on a Confederate flag. Yeah. <laughs> blending, blending, blending in. in. Yeah. Your, uh, your Milwaukee pack out, he just has Milwaukee bumper stickers on the back, which actually might be a pretty big target down here in the south because they know you got tools. <laughs> that is true. So um, one thing that I didn't like before was I didn't like how much little doodads and stuff that I had just kind of scrambled throughout my truck. Um, like batteries, yeah. foamy, ear pro, eye yep. pro, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so like generally since, you know, being in the gun industry and stuff like that, I'll have, you know, at least eye protection and some sort of earmuffs or in-ears just because the likelihood of me going to a range and me just personally shooting a lot, um, always good to have an extra set. Um, that way I don't go to the range empty handed and realize the whole day's ruined or something like that. So, um, I built, I, well, I shouldn't say built, but I put together just a couple little things in this pack out. I liked how I can stack these. So if I get more of them, it kind of scales a little bit. It doesn't scream like, yes, it screams like maybe I have tools which are expensive, but it doesn't scream like exactly what may be in here. Cause you'll see this is more just like some spare batteries. I have a couple different cables for common types of uh, chargers that I need. I have a couple extra like flat batteries for like the uh, 2032s, uh, just a general buck knife in case for some reason I either lose the pocket knife that I normally carry or I just need that one when I'm back in the back of my truck. Extra pocket knives are always yeah. something to go to. They always yep. disappear. Yep. Um, staples for 
you know, extra staples in case I forget the staple pack in my, um, I have a range box in there as well that keeps some of the pasters and all that stuff in there. Again, we could have unloaded my whole truck, but it, there's no need to show every little bit of it. Sure. Um, so then we have like a rechargeable battery for like flashlights and stuff. Um, some chem lights, uh, more so, not so. Like I can mark rooms that I just cleared, but mark like if I break down on the side of the road. Um, flares are, I've looked at them, they're kind of expensive and I just, I just can't pony up for those quite really. So just buying a bunch of chem lights, being able to break them, throw them alongside the highway if I was to change a tire in the dark. Um, this little cool thing, um, if I don't like the room that I'm staying in, uh, I have a little bit extra thing that I can, so this goes into the door jam. Oh, dude. And then you use this to like kind of tension it. And is this going to be like kick proof? No. But the idea is just if I don't like the door of the place that I'm staying, I can just throw that on there and have a little bit of extra piece of security of, hey, you're going to at least have to break this, which is probably going to make some noise. I thought that was a bottle opener when you first got it out. It kind of looks like, like it. You, you I'm sure be doing you, that while you're driving. I'm sure you can party a little bit with that. Um, <laughs> Knife sharpener, because it seems like whenever you go somewhere, you dull up your knife, and then if you don't have a way to sharpen it, that sucks. Uh, Sharpies, the little gear ties. I've never actually known what to use these for. Uh, I've used those before. So I had a fuel tank in my FJ. The straps rusted out because FJ frames are awful. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. And I used those to strap my fuel tank back up so it wasn't dragging on the ground. See, what? Yep. <laughs> so yeah, these are like, you can get these in a variety of lengths and they just kind of do whatever your heart desires. Yeah. They're kind of like reusable zip ties in a way. Yeah. They're really the, good for rolling up thick towel rolls. Oh, yeah. The, yep. the, the tank was full of gas too, so I wasn't strong enough to lift it. So I had to put a jack underneath it. So I jacked it up and then tied it off with that. Yeah. And I left it that way for a year until I had the money to fix it. <laughs> Anyways, go on. That means <laughs> I drove with you with that attached. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. At any moment it could have dropped, sparked, and we would have been up. <laughs> that, brings, that brings me joy. Yeah. Okay, like carry a, on. It's like a Ford Pinto, but like, you don't know it is. Yeah. They exploded. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Yeah, my mom used to have one of those. Um, I almost died the whole time. <laughs> then we have uh, some hockey tape. Uh, this is dual purpose. It works as tape, but I also play hockey. So in a pinch, if uh, I am uh, need that. Uh, water purification tablets. I thought that was a very dry condom. Uh, so did I. That's exactly what I thought. I don't know why. I just did. I, I don't stop at truck stops for prolonged periods of time. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair um, enough. And then like, you know, being able to just use these in a pinch. Um, again, we'll get into a little bit more of sure. what I have. Yeah, yeah. A uh, little sewing kit in case I blow a button on something. Um, this is more of like a clothes one, uh, but I also have one that's uh, a little bit more kit oriented. You can buy like the, uh, the Marine Corps has them and the Army has them. They're just little sewing kits. They have like, you know, blouse buttons and stuff like that. Oh, dude, yeah. if you're looking for any of those, they just so happen to sell those at Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, who happens to be one of the sponsors of this video. So if you're looking for surplus equipment like that, just like he was talking about, a little sewing suture kit. Yeah. They actually carry that? They do. Americana. You're not just making this up? No, I'm to serious. No, they do. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, hey. Amer well done, guys. Hey. As I was saying, Americana Pipe Dream, if you're curious, uh, look at the description of this video. There's a link. You can go save some money. Anyway, you were talking about uh, some of the stuff in this Milwaukee. Yeah, uh, from there. But yeah, sewing kits are underrated because like, I don't know if you've ever blown out pants or and you've only had one pair, like it kind of sucks to show up yeah. with your boxers. Dude, you should try that also, on your holy underwear. Yeah, it also <laughs> works really well for if you get a spider bite and it gets infected, you can heat up that needle and, uh, you know, pop it. Yes. How, yeah. do, you, how do you know about this? I'll just, you know, a video I did with Colin one time. All right, so Colin has something, <laughs> a growth between his legs. There you go. You good? Yep. Oh, 
hole. There you go. Yeah, that's infected. You have a hard, that is a hard, hard bump. You good? Yep. Yep, that is a spider bite, my friend. Put this around it. It felt good, like when you, that first like white chunk. Uh huh. It's good. So they call me Dr. E, <laughs> D-R-E-W. So you're welcome. <laughs> okay. One of the best of his videos, by the way. I mean, it was, yeah, it was a good one, but it was it by no some, means like the best. It did some numbers. I've got a lot of really good ones. It did some it's numbers. that you'd reference that one as the best, but okay. It did some numbers. Yeah. No okay, so you have a good general toolkit with supplies that goes a little bit beyond the typical tools, and it's also geared toward, oh, is that Uno? Nope, this is just waterproof matches, oh, ways okay. to start fires. Nice. Uh, you'll see I have a jet boil here. Sure. We'll get into that more, but yeah. Uh, generally just stuff that I can either secure myself a little bit safer and like, you know, glow sticks, uh, have some locks in here in case I need to lock something, a nail clipper that I was looking for earlier. Don't look at those. Um, it looks like, and then some 550 cords. So just random little tidbits that like are things that, you know, if you drove somewhere and you're staying at a hotel, something like a couple of these things can start adding up to an extra 50 bucks mm -hmm. of unwanted spending that you're like, yeah. I have a million of these things at home and yeah. now I have to buy one on the road. Yeah. And like little tiny things that just make your life easier if yeah. something doesn't work right or. Well, and it seems like a lot of guys will build out a range kit and they have gear in a bag or a pack or a, you know some, some way to carry it all. That's specifically specifically geared towards the range. The problem is that we spend so much more time off of the range. Unfortunately, we all would like to shoot a lot more than we do, but things that you have in there like gear ties and uh, ways to lock or secure a door, that, yeah, sure, if it goes to the range with you, that's fine. You may be able to find a way to use it if you need to, but you're thinking a little bit beyond just spending time on the range. That, that could live in your car and help you pretty much anywhere you go. Yeah, um, and one of the things like that is like, yeah, we do all like do all this cool stuff, but like reality is like you spend more time traveling to the place. You spend more time doing, you know, buying like you spend probably more time going and buying groceries and right. just doing random tidbits of life that like aren't sexy. But, you know, just having little things like that can be like, OK, cool. I have that in my truck yeah. um, rather than focusing completely like, oh, the whole world's going to end every time I leave my house. <laughs> which is like senile and you're like, bro, yes, the world's ugly, but like you can probably go to Cub Foods, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so like with that, like I've said this on my uh, page quite a bit. If you have a full gunshot blowout kit, but you don't have simple things like band-aids, like simple like medical gauze that you can just, I'm talking about nicks and scrapes. I'm not talking about severe bleeding little Tylenol, just little things like antibiotics, Benadryl, that can alleviate some of those little nuanced pains and aches that you get from traveling. Yeah. Um, you know, or like, let's say your tire blows out and, you know, you accidentally scraped your hand on the concrete and now you have a road rash on your knuckle. Well, like, cool, is a tourniquet and, you know, a whole thing of combat gauze, really what you need there? No, you probably want to just be able to disinfect the wipe, maybe cover up some of the cuts yeah. and put some uh, antiseptic stuff on it so you don't you know, get a weird gnarly skin issue. Smart. Not to mention if you have to stop at a gas station and buy that stuff, it's like, congratulations, you get three pills of Excedrin migraine for $10. Yep. It's like yeah. you end up blowing money. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> that's how we could, like just yeah that's how like literally you can start to afford nicer things like night vision and stuff like that just being conscious of the little spending that you do that is unnecessary by poor preparation and i'm not saying i'm prepared for everything in the world when i leave my house and there's probably things uh that i'll you know might need to buy on this trip but like the more I can reduce, the better I save, the more I can focus my money and efforts on things that I actually want to spend money on. Yeah. 
So. Like engagement rings. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, continue on. That's not a secret, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should say, that's plural. And, and, and engagement ring. Engagement okay, yeah, ring, Don't yes. buy more than one. That's yes. way too much. Yes. That's overkill. That's yes. trying too, way too hard. All right, what else you got? <laughs> uh, from here, so this I actually keep... I, this I just move back and forth when necessary. This has a life straw. It has another charger. It has some more water purification stuff. It has the top for this MSR. Um, so this is just kind of like food, food preparation and water prep. This, I also have, again, a charger in here um, for rechargeable batteries, which generally, uh, one thing I forgot to bring out in here, but Everyone kind of probably knows about them, the little uh, battery packs that you can mm -hmm. pre-charge that can like charge a phone. And yeah. then like, I have a bigger solar one. I don't always bring that with me because it is completely reliant on the sun. It takes up a lot of space. I can bring two of those little battery packs most likely if I need to charge my phone without my truck. Yeah. I have two ways of doing that. Well, sure. those solar, those solar uh, external batteries, I Velcroed to the inside window mm -hmm. of the back of my FJ, so it was constantly getting sun. It kept it pretty well charged. That's smart. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah. yeah, and then like the, you can also use, like if you have a bigger dash, you can put them on the dash too, yeah. stuff like that. Yep. So you're not always constantly have to run your vehicle to charge if you don't have a way to do that. Um, from there, so yeah, this implies that I have some dry food. I do. Um, generally don't carry more than like three of them because more than likely I won't need them or, you know, I'll be close enough to other things. And let's be real. I'm not trying to eat those just to eat them. Of course. Yeah, but <laughs> I guess you did enough of that in the Marine Corps, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> However, you know, now that you're down here in the, in the South, it's, uh, it's not uncommon to not be able to find a restaurant or mm -hmm. fast food or even a gas station that's open past 9 p.m. Like it happens all the time. And if you're hungry, if you're getting a headache because you haven't eaten in a while, boom, bust one of those out. Yep. So. Yeah, and that was something I considered too since like I drove from Minnesota to Kentucky to Tennessee, which is 14 hours. And like I preloaded the front seat of my truck with a bunch of snacks and stuff like beef jerky, fruit snacks, uh, water, some energy drinks, some um, just like juice and stuff like that. I don't want to just drink caffeine-based drinks. I don't want to just drink water. Like because – let's be real, like pleasure, comfort food on the road kind of gets you through yeah. the highs and the lows. You totally. get stuck in traffic, some Sour Patch kids are like, all right, yeah. I can, I can eat a whole bag of these and yeah. not flip someone <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, then from there we'll move to the tarp. So the tarp just stays in the truck, uh, to purpose to be able to have something to cover something in the back of my truck. If I don't want it to get wet, like if I'm helping someone move something like furniture or something like that. Or, or dude, if, if your car window, you may have just been about to say that, but if you have a car window that gets broken or blown out, then you still have a way to keep it dry on the inside. Yep. Yeah. So just being able to kind of seal something from the water or elements yeah. is nice. Yeah. I've got a car blowout window story. Do you want to hear it? Yes. Okay. So in the middle of college, I was driving to another town. My girlfriend at the time decided to pop the uh, sunroof while it was like it was like midnight and it was one of the sunroofs on the old Nissan Altimas which got recalled and they came up above so the air would catch it so if you popped it while you were driving it would rip the whole thing off so it came up and just it sounded like a gunshot I mean it, was, it sounded louder than a gunshot just boom and the, and all of a sudden air you know, and looked in the rearview mirror. I could see the glint from the other <laughs> car lights behind me as it like swirled in the air and smashed on the ground. And uh, luckily, I had a trash bag in the car and I duct taped trash bag. And, but anyways, yeah, that's my car blowout story. Continue yeah. on. Yeah, yeah I please. wish I had a tarp. Yeah, so tarps are nice. Oh, what is oh, this? dude, these are sick. If you haven't heard, this is called a Cooney uh, Bap. A, a, no, <laughs> a Booney oh, Cap. A Booney Cap. A Booney Cap. That's not what they're called, dude. Also, also can be purchased at Americana Pipe Dream. Well, while we're talking about sponsors, oh, dude, uh, there's a gonna... lot of other things that we need to cover. We'll get to stuff like this, but if you have not hopped on to the Shooting Surplus website, you can start by going to the description in the video here and find a link for the newsletter where you can get a lot of equipment like what's here on the table at a discount. So go ahead and check them out as well. Shooting Surplus, thank you for keeping content like this going. 
We'll and we'll American step away. Five Dream. Thanks for uh, segueing into the shooting surplus promo. <laughs> okay, we got to stop that. Keep going. Uh, I guess one thing we skipped over is like on body stuff. Uh, so generally carry, you know, pistol. Uh, I've been really enjoying the uh, Tenacore holster. Fits nice. I actually have been carrying without a light, especially on longer trips. Um, just because having this big surface area, like as you add a light, obviously you get more surface area on your body. Sitting in the car, I started to feel more back pain and stuff. I'm getting older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should let me pop your back, dude. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, oh, I brought a massage gun too. Okay. This is going too far. No, but like this video is going to get you're driving in now. traffic and you're just like on your neck. Yeah. Perfect. Good. So, wow. yeah, bring a massage gun if you're going on a long drive because sta sitting like this the whole time, your shoulders are going to get sore, and it's quite quite excellent to have that. Okay. Um, Take your word for it. <laughs> it is. Dude. All right. Make it weird. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I know I'm relaxed. <laughs> uh, then from there, uh, since I don't carry a light on the gun, I always carry one in my pocket. So I got my uh, OKW here, and then... My trusty dusty Benchmade uh, that I have had for quite some time, and uh, dang, dude, I, you've worn I that down. That How yeah. long have you had that? Uh, I bought that as a UDP present to myself in 2015. Wow, dude! So I found out that the uh, that's the 810 Benchmade. I found out that had I been a weird knife collector that just puts it in a sheath and holds on to it and shows off people without ever using it as its intended purpose, I could sell it for like 500 bucks. Oh. But that's lame because this thing has a story to tell and I have scars to show you. Good, um, good. Because I'm an idiot with a knife, so. Use your equipment, right? <laughs> yeah, just don't abuse yourself with your equipment. Sure. Um, and then obviously like wallet, stuff like that, um, keys, general stuff like that. Um, from there, we can start getting into this. Uh, this is just another little kit, a uh, little bit more of the same. This is a little bit more of the serious wound stuff. Uh, I like to keep this around with me every time I go in the truck. I have like a nice little compartment. I can just throw this. I really like the DACA bags just because uh, they hold up well. They're waterproof or water resistant, whatever the one. And uh, yeah, they're just a good way to kind of carry things and be able to, if I need to, I can kind of just like Squish squeeze them. this down, yep. you know? Um, so they don't take up too much space. If I need to throw them in a backpack too, throw them in the backpack, have a couple bags, don't really need to show those. Just, they're just carrying sure. like random clothes and stuff. Are they tactical looking? Uh, the only, I have a tactical range bag that I just threw a bunch of ammo in um, for some of the work stuff and all that later. Uh, but then, like, my computer bag is just, like, a Vertex uh, open flap top yeah. um, that, obviously, yeah, Vertex makes the covert style of bag. But it's one of their pretty, like, tame ones. Um, hmm. Carry my computer, my camera, some hard drives, uh, just a little bit of ins and outs that I don't necessarily need to put in the suitcase or the Pelicans. Gotcha. So. Nice. Uh, the only real different thing about this one is there's a couple more uh little things about it so like an emergency blanket um being able to just open this up and if i i live in the cold so like having something like this is a lot nicer uh you can pair it with a tarp and kind of keep that body heat you know if i fall into a snowbank in my uh home state of minnesota in the middle of winter and nobody finds me um i can even if my truck dies i can keep myself warm and uh, yeah, hopefully evade that uh, cold death. Lock pit kit, um, just in case. Yeah, to make covert entry. To make covert entries. And then yeah, just more tape and little, little doodads like that that I've sure. already covered, so. Nice. Right on, dude. That's the general gist of what stays in the truck a lot. Okay. Um, and then I kind of uh, do different things for different trips. Do so, you okay. tend to take a helmet and night vision on trips. Let's say that you weren't on this trip for work. You're just coming out here for a wedding and then going back home. Would you travel with a helmet and nods? 
Generally, I will say that I probably travel with helmet and nods more than I do with a rifle, just for the sheer fact that I enjoy exposing people to night vision. Yeah, and it's just, it's so fun. Like that camera is loaded of pictures of people experiencing night vision for the first time and just like seeing their faces just like yeah, light up. Like it's just too fun. And like, sure, there's the practical side of things like, oh, if I blow out both my headlights, blah, blah, blah. Sure, whatever, right? That's not very likely that I'm gonna continue driving or need to continue driving in that situation. But now I have the capability of, you know, being able to have an advantage over things in the night. Yeah. Um, while also just being able to be like, hey guys, like I like the wedding I went to, it was a bunch of my Marine Corps friends. So like being like, hey guys, this is a lot cooler than the stuff we were issued. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a lot nicer. Like this is the stuff you can buy. And I get a lot of questions about it from you know the various friends that I have through different states. They see what I'm up to, see that I get to play with flashlights, guns, night vision, stuff like that. So yeah, I like to bring this around, especially when I know that I'm gonna be around friends. Yeah. Or if I'm gonna be on properties where I can go kill varmints and stuff like that. They're so kidding. proliferate nods. Oh yeah. I mean, if the Taliban has them, we should too. Yes. Agreed. So, yeah, I got them for free. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, we just left them there. They yeah. had sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> the U.S. government. <laughs> Sponsor you, Biden. But Biden administration. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool dude. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, got the helmet. Uh, generally, keep the ears on it because more than likely, you know, it's just already put together. Uh, then I get to kind of show people what it is fully entailing when yeah. you have this on uh, because a lot of people, believe it or not, still kind of don't have an idea of what a ballistic helmet actually feels like. Mm -hmm. um, and again, much nicer than the issued one. This is an OpsCore SF uh, Fast. And I just kind of like showing people like, hey, yes, I was in the Marines, but like it wasn't just because I was in the Marines doesn't mean that I lost interest in this stuff. Like I, w I joined the Marine Corps because I was interested in night vision, like, you know, lasers, rifles, like everything tactical and, uh, you know, the art of being an infantryman and all that stuff. So just kind of being able to show them, hey, it wasn't just my military experience that like meant that I wanted that or that I got to use that stuff. It's like, no, that was just a part of what I enjoyed already. And that was the easiest way to get to it quicker in, in my life. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, cool. That's kind of what goes with me. Nice um, boots over here. Those. Yes. So talking about clothing and stuff. Mm, <laughs> they right. actually smell good. Dude, they air out. Maybe perfectly. I just like your feet. I don't know. <laughs> no, they, they smell new. I, so these are Vivo Barefoots. Um, I've had these for probably about, I want to say about five, six months. They have significantly less goat crap on them than my shoes do. <laughs> wow. See what I'm saying? They, do you put deodorant in your, on your socks? No. Wait, is that That's strange? No, not at oh. all. Okay. No. Uh, so a good idea. I've been plugging these a lot because I've really enjoyed them as I've like kind of gotten into taking care of my feet a little bit more. Uh, these are more wider. If you don't notice that on camera, I'm dripping dirt everywhere, but, um, what's nice about them is having my feet spread out, um, compared to the boots that I wore in the Marine Corps, um, and shoes that I've worn in the past, uh, they narrow your toes in and you know, your feet are naturally wanting to spread out. They're how you balance and root to the ground. So by getting my feet spread wider, uh, it's actually helped a couple of my knee problems that I've had. Um, I don't, by being able to get, regain the like functionality of my toes again, I've been able to actually like move my foot and not have a severe cramp, just shoot up the back of my calf. So, I've really liked these. And the one thing I will say is like, make sure, you know, you don't have something that's going to, I know these aren't recommended for certain people with certain foot types. Make sure you do your own re research. Like I had, I found out, Hey, my feet are supposed to be wider than what they are. So gotcha. Hmm. how would you find that out? I just watched YouTube, um, about, uh, 
like Squat University and Knees Over Toes. Mm -hmm. Those two guys on, uh, oh, they yeah. do a lot of stuff on IG that had kind of like got me thinking about it. I think it was Knees Over Toes. Uh, he did a video with some Marines and we're like, hey, the Marine Corps is hard on people's lower body. Like you beat your knees up, you beat your ankles up and all that affects upward towards your hips and everything like that. And there's a running joke that I'm a German shepherd because my hips have been off centered <laughs> <laughs> for a while. Yeah. And one of my buddy, it's funny because blonde hair, blue eyes, German descent. Uh -huh. He called me a German shepherd and he's like, they're going to have to put you down someday because your hips are oh my displaced, God. dude. <laughs> so like you just carry these, you just keep these in the truck with you all the time or what? Uh, honestly, if I'm out like in like country areas and stuff like that, mm -hmm. generally I'm wearing these. Gotcha. Um, I'm wearing more of just the like casual go around uh, clothes today, but I pretty much will rock these whenever I feel like. Nice, um, cool. And you can get them in black, which I'll probably buy another pair so I can wear them a little bit more as regular shoes, but I really like those. Cool. Right on, dude. Well, you got a lot of other cool stuff that goes along with your work trip. Mm -hmm. Should we clear off the table and then uh, see what you brought as far as range gear? Sure. Cool. So obviously this is stuff that you wouldn't necessarily take with you. You wouldn't bring all of these things on a trip if you're just gonna leave for five days and maybe hit a range while you're out and about, but you are out on a work trip. So what what all stuff do you have with you for this trip? Yeah, so I brought a mix of rifles, lights, and other you know mod light accessories. <laughs> flashlights and flashlights accessories. It's, yeah. Uh, Hank Hill would say if he sold lights. <laughs> um, so yeah, I tr tried to just bring a little bit of a different variety of stuff. So we have plenty of stuff to show off uh, as we try and ramp up more content for that stuff for our um, social media and stuff like that. So, you know, I have just my blasting rifle. I have kind of more of a night vision passive rifle, uh, AUG, or as the street term, AUG. Um, which, yeah, sorry, Steyer. <laughs> so yeah, um, we can start with this one and we cleared these out beforehand, but we will make sure everyone knows. So this is just a ripcord 13 and, uh, 13.9, obviously out to 16. So, you know, I don't get killed in my sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just a rifle that I enjoy shooting. It's just that I have this pretty much ready to just rip. Um, when I really want to go and push speed and all that stuff, this is my favorite one for that. Still no muzzle break. Yep. Got to go flash hider. So fl I, I'm a big flash hider fan. Uh, if it's not three prong or uh, bird cage, I'm not really interested. Um, I just, the only thing I will say about three prong is I don't, really care for the ring, but I know that kind of goes away as it gets used and carboned up and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, yeah, big flash, big flash hider guy. Um, so yeah, this is just, you see this a lot in the videos that I shoot like fast, just trying to focus on the sheer shooting ability uh, and skill. I'm gonna jump over this to this one. Um, this one kind of showcases a little bit more of the versatility of Modlite's products, uh, we paired it with an Arasaki mount. Um, so this is actually a uh, white light and a IR setup. So it's pretty cool with the EOTech because not everything necessarily needs a laser if you're just trying to shoot night vision stuff. Um, eventually a can will get put on here, just don't have the muzzle device and extra cans to be bouncing back and forth with. Um, but yeah, this one is a very cool wrist three rifle oh you got the lower too yes can i see that for a sec yes so this is their like ambi lower setup as well i don't know that i've played with these lowers yet i've played with the uppers and uh, those hand guards are super rad but i have not played with the ambi lower there interesting and then mag release down here on that side yep that's super rad dude yeah and cool you have this setup for passive under nods right you have a white light and an ir head yep passive a, active uh, unity riser yep Passive, active, um, just kind of focusing a little bit more on like, you know, I don't have an aiming device laser on there or anything, but I can pretty much be able to do visible stuff and have supplemental IR on here. Cool. Um, and 
also get to, you know, showcase kind of the different suite of things. What so. kind of cutting back to something else? What kind of rifle were you issued when you were in the Marine Corps? In the Marine Corps, I had a M4 with a uh, PEC 16. Um, no white light because they didn't issue them. Uh, if you put one on, it probably got stolen from the armory. Uh, and the, if you know about the PEC 16, PEC 16 uh, it has a built-in white light, and it's not good. Sure. <laughs> but uh, it is a light, and generally, quite frankly, white light in general, like infantry stuff, is not used very often. Light discipline is a big stressor, big discipline that is practiced throughout things. So a lot of the times, like you were just using night vision or like a small little, uh, one of those little LED uh, red lights yeah. that just kind of like have the click. Yeah. It's literally just a little tension thing with the battery. Yeah. I had those on like my, uh, on my uh, plate carrier, geez. Yeah, that works. For like map reading kind of stuff, small admin projects or? Map reading, digging in packs, just stuff that, and like there's plenty of people who have dove into like what light discipline a lot more than we can here. But like even that small light source can be easily seen. Uh, like if you, if we cross the field and um, I was activating that even in the tree line and you had night vision on, oh, yeah, you yeah. would still be able to see that LED with no problem. Like so yeah. um, having a high output light in that situation doesn't really make sense. And um, interesting little tidbit that kind of goes into like a light discipline and practice. Um, if you're rocking a 14, um, Obviously, your eye that you're using the 14 on is going to be exposed to the light of that, so it's not going to be adjusted when you flip the 14 up. But a good practice um, that you can do to kind of keep that natural night vision, uh, close, whenever you're around a light source, close that eye that you are not using the night vision with, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to kind of keep, help you keep a little bit more of that uh, natural not night vision, but adjustment of your eye to the night. Yeah. Um, so you can still read lighting conditions and. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and you're not you're not totally just completely blind every single time you flip up your 14. Makes yeah. sense. So, and obviously lighting conditions are a factor of that, but it's one of those things where you won't know anything about what I'm talking about unless you go try it. Sure. Yeah. So get out there. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll jump over to the AUG street name Og. So uh, this is just a, it's just a cool rifle. Um, I kind of have it more of just a themed gun. Uh, you can see it's kind of got the uh, M81 style of uh, pattern to it. It's got an M81 mod light, uh, a tan UE tail cap, so it just matches. Uh, you know, there's no way to really get a good uh, pressure switch on here. So I have the uh, Surefire pressure switch on here so I can just if I'm shooting without the light I can just hold like this but then if I want to activate just quick roll over press the pressure pad the bigger pressure pad on this is a little bit nicer I tried it with mod button light wasn't a huge fan of it for this particular one just because I like the extra surface area yeah. and then plus I like all my weapon lights. If you notice, DS00, DS00, outside of the IR one on here, I also have a DS00 on there. I'm a big fan of being able to click the tail cap on too. Um, from a class that Luke and I took, Luke Brown, um, when we were holding hallways and you, know, you need a white light on, the last thing that you really wanna have is just a momentary option mm -hmm. because if you are trying to keep your gun under arm, it's nice to just be able to click that on. Sorry, yeah. Drew. No, it's okay. My vision's already bad anyway. It's okay. Close yeah. your eye. Now at least the spot obscures <laughs> that mustache of yours. Hey, you said it was a nice mustache. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> so at least having options built in, you're not stuck with momentary only or stuck with constant on. You have the option to do yes. both depending on the scenario. Yes. And realistically, this is a fun gun. Sure. I bought yeah, this dude. as a fun gun. Yeah. It is a very reliable rifle. Uh, it is fielded plenty of other places, but realistically, we're in America. I still 
naturally gravitate towards the AR from sure. background and from the parts of availability of that stuff. So yeah. how are you liking that optic on there? The Vortex UH-1. The UH-1 is nice. Um, I personally am a little bit more of an EOTech fan. Uh, I think the UH-1 just looks cool on the AUG. It keeps it that space gun vibe. So um, both are great optics. If you have either of them, just keep shooting. Cool. Um, from there, we have the belt. Uh, we already did a loadout of my plate carrier. I have that with for some back, like some layout stuff, you know, be able to show off different things with kit. Um, a lot of the stuff you see on our stuff is actual stuff that everyone in the, like from me and Nick using. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly shooting. Um, it's interesting trying to take product photos, but also keep it fresh and, uh, you know, hey, like, I want my belt set up a different way. Sometimes you'll see some of my stuff kind of scattered around sure. um, just to refresh things for people's viewing pleasure. Yeah. This is an AWS. Yep. That is an AWS belt, uh, courtesy of the Art and War podcast. Yeah, nice. Yep. Love so, those dudes. Safari Lane holster. Uh, what is it? Blue Force gear. Yep. Med kit. What dump pouch is this? That's also the AWS. Okay. Um, and then a uh, Spirit of Systems, what is it, the JSTA? The JASTA, I think yeah. is how they say it, uh, JSTA. So rifle mag can go in the top, and then you still have a GP pouch yep. on the side here. Um, oh, shoot, STAC, thank yep. you. And then uh, what is this? This is a Midwest Tactical Solutions uh, little Kydex one. Cool. Simple little belt, but looks like it, it works well. Yep. There's really nothing special about it. The one thing I will say is if you are, I'm not necessarily a smaller dude, but I like using space and keeping profile down. I really like this because like you said, yeah, it's like another pouch on your st stuff. So generally range stuff, I just kind of keep the like ins and outs of things that I might need on the range. But like when we were at uh, Black Site 2, this was like loaded up with uh, frag grenades and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah. So. Very versatile pouch, super big fans of Spiritus. Nice. And then what's going on with this thing? This is the rifle that I will say is my, if I could only pick one. And I don't like the catchphrase terms of these rifles, or the do-all, the recce, whatever. Uh, I built this out with my needs and what I wanted out of it to be one rifle that I could pack and be able to kind of do the things I like to do. Like realistically, most of the time, this is used for shooting raccoons on the farm and stuff like that. So I can do it in the daytime if they're out further in the field. If they're up closer, I have that. I have a white light with the 100 concepts cap on there. So if I am doing some sort of like, you know, woodsy stuff where I'm doing cool guy things or whatever, I have some discipline there. Um, but yeah, this has been one of my longest own rifles. Um, this has had the most round count through it and it's nothing special. It's just a full BCM gun that I, I trust and can pretty much do most, most things I want to do with it. So I've had some interesting trains of thought with guns like this when guys say, okay, this is my one gun. If I have to grab one, that's going to try to, we'll say do it all, but do close and far, right? Yep. I have noticed for myself that more often I wish I had two or three inches of barrel more. I want that round to be moving a little bit faster and have a flatter trajectory between here and there, whatever the distance is. And I find myself wanting a little bit more barrel more often than I find myself wanting a little bit shorter barrel. You have 14.5, is that what this is? Yeah, or? that's 14.5 with a fixed can on it. So okay, perfect. it's probably more about 18 or so. Okay. But at guessing, I haven't actually seen what that can is, but sure. that's just a fix. So I, I got that can fixed on the muzzle. Um, so, you know, it's a, Turbo K, but I've also shot the crap out of that thing and yeah. it just keeps running. Nice. But, do you yeah. feel like you're still able to do close in compact stuff with a build like this? I would say so. Um, this isn't the gun that I would grab to go to a CQB class with. Sure. But the realistic thing is like, um, I mean, 
joining the Marine Corps, seeing, being trained by guys who were in like Ramadi and uh, like Iraq and Afghanistan in the early stages where they're still rocking M16s. It's like, I can't really bitch about having all this capability on there yeah. when they were wa rocking, you know, personal flashlights that they bought. And, you know, at the time, we're not talking about the top tier class of flights that we have now with candela and all these lumens and all the flood and the focused beams mm -hmm. so yeah i think i agree I, I agree with you i i think more often than not i like the ability to know that hey i can reach out with a little bit more comfort and ease not that you can't with shorter barrel guns but it just with the optics that you put on these style of guns they're generally made for this barrel length stuff like that so yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. It's nicer to know, hey, I can kind of do both spectrums. Sure. Yep. And fitness, I think, comes into a bigger thing. It's like the, the heavier your gun gets, the more, hey, yeah, you should probably make sure you can hold the thing all day. Of course. Um, Makes and sense, dude. You've got a camera. Yep. And this is For what... The most important kind of shooting there is. <laughs> what do you got? An A7? Yep. Just it's a nice camera, simple. dude. Right on, man. What do you do with this? I just want to take some pictures. Oh, okay. Oh. You've got the mustache for it. And, and the right. You just need to let your hair grow a little bit more to get the full Dahmer effect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's a good, cool. That's a good right one. Right on, dude. Yeah. This is what kind of, um, you know, shoots some of the videos you see from us. Shoots a lot of, like, shoots all the videos that you see from me. Um, the... I don't regret buying a camera one bit. I don't think you need to buy a studio camera for, you know, just day in, day out stuff. Yeah. But having the ability to take photos without the distraction of your phone mm -hmm. is something that I do not regret at all. Yeah, man. Because it does not take you out of the moment. It actually makes you feel more a part of it in a weird way, especially once you get confident with it. Yeah. So cool. Dude, that's like straight out of the life of Walter Mitty. And that <laughs> yeah. Sean Penn scene. Yeah. Oh. I just want to stay in it. That's good. Cool. Well, Colin, uh, where can people find you? You can find me at Colin underscore underdoll on Instagram. Uh, that's generally where I put most of my stuff. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, oh, two L's, by the way. Good. <laughs> good. I've been spelling it wrong this whole time. Probably. Guys, thank you for joining us. We so appreciate it. Uh, it's been fun to kind of do a quick rundown. We'll have a lot more stuff on the way for, uh, for you guys. Hopefully, if we have time here, we'll do a quick podcast. And uh, by now, that podcast may have already dropped, hard to say, but Colin, thank you for joining us. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it, man. Let's get some coffee and talk about your childhood. I love it. Thank you, Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dr. U. The oh yeah, Dr. U. Yeah. yeah, if you're interested, uh, go scroll Drew's page, find where he became a medical profession, and see all the rage comments from uh, actual qualified people. Yes. <laughs> it was textbook, though. Let's be real. <laughs>